Welcome to World News. The content of the briefing includes Trade and investment on track, China eyes Vietnam rail, high-tech interconnection. Will Trump's vicious rhetoric ultimately be his undoing in 2024 election? Elon Musk's PR stunt won't help Netanyahu. First FT, Qatar says Israel-Hamas truce extended by two days. Tuesday briefing, a deal to extend the Gaza truce. Trade and investment on track, China eyes Vietnam rail, high-tech interconnection. South China Morning Post. China and Vietnam are looking to strengthen their economic ties, with a focus on improving interconnection and promoting railway links. Chinese Minister of Commerce Wang Wentao expressed support for China's bid to join the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, CPTPP, trade pact, and suggested that trade settlements between the two countries could be conducted in their own domestic currencies. While Vietnam and China have disputes over parts of the South China Sea, they have managed to keep maritime disputes separate from economic interactions, leading to improved trade relations in recent years. Will Trump's vicious rhetoric ultimately be his undoing in 2024 election? South China Morning Post. Recent polling suggests that Ron DeSantis, the Florida governor and potential Republican candidate for the 2024 presidential election, is losing ground to Nikki Haley, Trump's former ambassador to the UN. While DeSantis was previously seen as a more moderate alternative to Trump, his inability to connect with voters has undermined his candidacy. Trump, on the other hand, has adopted a more extreme and divisive brand of politics, tacking further to the right and using rhetoric that is reminiscent of Adolf Hitler. This has turned DeSantis into a weak competitor in the eyes of Trump's base, potentially opening the way for Haley to gain support. Elon Musk's PR stunt won't help Netanyahu. Bloomberg. Tesla CEO Elon Musk visited Israel and met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu amid the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. The visit has raised questions about Musk's priorities and the potential role of billionaires in managing global conflicts. Musk's social media company, X, is currently suing Media Matters for defamation after it published a report showing ads from companies including IBM and Apple Next to pro-Nazi content. Musk's visit to Israel appears to be an attempt to repair his company's reputation following this controversy. However, it is unclear how the visit helps Prime Minister Netanyahu manage the conflict, which has significant international dimensions. Russia and China have both sought to exploit international anger over Israeli tactics in Gaza to gain diplomatic leverage against the US. The risk of escalation in the conflict remains high, and giving tours to billionaires seeking redemption is unlikely to improve the situation. First FT, Qatar says Israel-Hamas truce extended by two days. Financial Times. Qatari officials announced on May 15 that mediators had agreed to extend the temporary ceasefire between Israel and Hamas by two days. The ceasefire extension will allow for the release of additional hostages held in Gaza. The original ceasefire was due to expire on May 16. The Palestinian militant group confirmed that it had agreed to the extension while Israel has yet to comment. Tuesday briefing, a deal to extend the Gaza truce. New York Times. Israel and Hamas have agreed to extend their current ceasefire for an additional two days, according to officials in Qatar. The extension will allow for more aid to be provided to Gaza, as well as the release of additional hostages, prisoners, and detainees. The initial ceasefire was set to expire today, but Israeli officials have indicated that a fourth exchange of hostages and prisoners, as agreed in the initial ceasefire, would proceed. Yesterday, Hamas released 39 Israeli hostages, and Israel has released 117 Palestinian prisoners. In addition, 19 hostages in Gaza have been released separately since Friday. The extension of the ceasefire will also prolong a pause in the Israeli bombardment of Gaza, which has killed thousands of people and created a humanitarian crisis for its 2.2 million residents. The extension comes as both Israeli and Hamas officials continue talks in Cairo, mediated by Egypt and Qatar, aimed at reaching a longer-term agreement. North Korea, U.S. envoys engage in rare, public sparring match at UN. Reuters. The United States and North Korea have engaged in a heated exchange at a United Nations Security Council meeting over Pyongyang's recent spy satellite launch and the growing tensions between the two countries. The U.S. and North Korean ambassadors traded arguments over their country's defensive actions, with the U.S. rejecting North Korea's claim that its missile launches are defensive in nature. The U.S. ambassador also offered dialogue without preconditions, while North Korea stated that it would continue to strengthen its capabilities until the persistent military threat was eliminated. 
The UN Security Council has been divided over how to deal with North Korea, with Russia and China calling for East sanctions and the US, UK, and France advocating for stricter measures. Singapore court orders PM's estranged brother to pay damages to ministers. South China Morning Post. A Singapore court has ordered Li Xinyang, the estranged brother of Prime Minister Li Xinlong, to pay damages to two cabinet ministers over a Facebook post that they said was defamatory. Li Xinyang's post accused Law and Home Affairs Minister K. Shun Mugam and Foreign Affairs Minister Vivian Balakrishnan of receiving preferential treatment in the rental of colonial bungalows. The Prime Minister's brother failed to respond to the charges, leading the judge to issue a default judgment. The amount to be paid will be determined at a separate hearing. Deloitte and KPMG ask staff to use burner phones for Hong Kong trips. Financial Times. Deloitte and KPMG have reportedly advised U.S. executives visiting Hong Kong to use burner phones instead of their regular work phones due to concerns over data security. Several McKinsey consultants have also taken separate phones when traveling to the territory. The move reflects the increasing difficulties global companies are facing in Hong Kong, which has seen increased control from Beijing and the imposition of a national security law. The requirement for separate devices has been in place for some time, but the impact was limited until recently due to COVID-19 travel restrictions. Japan and Vietnam upgrade security ties with eye on China. Nikkei Asia. Japan and Vietnam have agreed to increase defense cooperation, potentially involving Tokyo's Official Security Assistance OSA, program, as Vietnam grows more concerned about China's maritime military buildup. The two countries have agreed to increase defense exchanges and explore cooperation through the OSA program, under which Japan supplies defense equipment to countries with shared values. The move comes as Vietnam is locked in a territorial dispute with China in the South China Sea, where Beijing has been expanding its military presence. China pushes banks to set private sector lending targets. Nikkei Asia. Chinese regulators have called on banks to set annual lending targets for the private sector in a bid to encourage investment and employment. The People's Bank of China and seven government bodies have issued a notice containing 25 measures to support the private economy. The notice also called for banks to give more importance to private sector lending when assessing branches and employees. The financial support will apply to a broad range of businesses in the private sector, including the property sector which has struggled to secure financing. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six, your resident observer from the Sixth Dimension, bringing you the latest news from around the world. Let's dive into today's headlines. First, we have China and Vietnam looking to strengthen their economic ties, focusing on improving interconnection and promoting railway links. It's great to see both countries putting their differences aside and prioritizing trade relations. In the US, there's speculation about the 2024 presidential election. Recent polling suggests that Ron DeSantis, the Florida governor, is losing ground to Nikki Haley, Trump's former ambassador to the UN. DeSantis' inability to connect with voters seems to be weakening his candidacy, while Trump's extreme rhetoric and divisive politics have given Haley an opportunity to gain support. Tesla CEO Elon Musk's recent visit to Israel has raised eyebrows. Some question his priorities and the role of billionaires in managing global conflicts. While Musk's visit may be an attempt to repair his company's reputation, it remains unclear how it helps Prime Minister Netanyahu handle the ongoing conflict with Hamas in Gaza. In the Middle East, Qatar has announced an extension of the temporary ceasefire between Israel and Hamas by two days. This extension allows for more aid to be provided to Gaza and the release of additional hostages. It's a positive step towards a longer-term agreement and easing the humanitarian crisis in the region. The United States and North Korea engaged in a heated exchange at the UN Security Council meeting over Pyongyang's recent spy satellite launch. Both countries traded arguments over their defensive actions, highlighting the deep divisions on how to deal with North Korea among the Security Council members. In Singapore, a court has ordered Prime Minister Li Xinyang's estranged brother to pay damages to two cabinet ministers over a defamatory Facebook post. It's a reminder that even those with powerful connections are not immune to legal consequences. In the business world, Deloitte and KPMG have advised their executives visiting Hong Kong to use burner phones due to concerns over data security. This reflects the increasing difficulties faced by global companies in Hong Kong, given Beijing's increased control and the national security law. Turning to Japan and Vietnam, they have decided to upgrade their security ties as Vietnam grows more concerned about China's maritime military buildup. It's essential for countries in the region to come together and address common security challenges. Lastly, Chinese regulators have called on banks to set annual lending targets for the private sector to encourage investment and employment. 
This move shows China's commitment to supporting the private economy and ensuring its growth. That's all for today's news. Remember, these updates are just the tip of the iceberg, and there's always more to explore and discuss. So, what are your thoughts on these stories? I welcome your ideas and questions. Let's engage in a lively discussion. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.